Blog Talk Radio. It seems like I got nothing to do. Hit up some standard radio. I'm listening to one of the top podcasts, and they bringing you the real. And when they talk sports, it feels like you on the field. From real talk to real sports, from Madden to 2K, just listen for one day. They'll grab you when you say it's on the net, man. Turn off your stereo, not music. I mess with some standard radio. Yeah, 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 man. Hope y'all do the same. I hope you mess with Sim Standard Radio. And we thank you guys for tuning in. I see there's guys already on the call line, so we appreciate that. I'm going to give them a shout-out, 240 and 337, already tuned in. You know, we appreciate all the loyal guys who call in, or even the first-time guys. You know, this is what we do it for. It's a community show, so we appreciate that. But, yeah, man, welcome back. Episode 49, we almost at episode 50. That's Kind of crazy, man. We, we've we been doing this for a little while now, so we're happy to bring it to you guys. But, of course, we're going to go around with the panel, see how everybody is doing before we get started with the topics. And thank you to Jive Turkey for the great intro. What's Smitty, man? What's going on, man? How was your week, man? All right, pretty good week, you know what I'm saying? Uh, looking forward to getting into yet another great show here, you know what I'm saying, uh, since Sandra Radio. Creeping ever so close to the E3. You know, we got two two games on the horizon. Hopefully we find some news out beforehand. But, you know, hey, either way, that's going to be the granddaddy of them all right there. So, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, the football gaming scene being the jump off once again, you know what I'm saying, having some good comp out there. But, you now we got some good topics, you know, uh, to talk about. And uh, I'm just looking forward to getting it in. Definitely want to hear from the people. So, uh, I encourage everybody, you know, that are listening, let people know, tell somebody to tell somebody to call in and holler at us, you know, share your thoughts. So, Absolutely, man. And one key thing that he said was we want to hear from the people, man. Like this is something that we highly encourage. And I'll say a little more about that once we check in with Azure in regards to the topics. But AZ, man, what's going on out in Tennessee? How was your week? Good, man, until I heard the news that the Titans want to do something stupid and trade the number two pick for old Phillip Rivers. And don't get me wrong, I like Phillip Rivers. I think he's a great quarterback. He's in the upper echelon of quarterbacks, but he's old, man, and he had back problems last season. And to think that the Titans would trade the number two overall pick instead of trading to get more picks or either – I mean, if you're going to take a quarterback, develop one because, I mean, let's be honest. The Titans roster is not there right now to where you can say, all we need is a quarterback. So for them to be considering that, I don't know. It could be just news, man. It's this time of year to where NFL starts getting on my nerves with the draft stuff. So I'm just ready for the draft to get here and see what the Titans do, whether they mess it up for the next 10 years or, you know, we set the ship right and and do something smart in the draft. But other than that, man, Ready for another Sim Standard Radio show? Got some good topics. Ready for E3? People in the community should be excited. We hadn't been, we hadn't had the prospect, prospect of two games in a long time. So, not since Backbreaker and and Madden went head to head. So, even if they didn't go head to head, we saw a change in Madden because of Backbreaker. So, if Joe Montana can put out some concrete and we can get some confirmation. Damon Grow just released another screenshot. Oh, yeah. We need game. Oh, yeah, just saw that. So, <laughs> yeah, we need game So, E3, you know, Joe Montana, we're we going to get into the news or whatever, so I ain't going to break it. But, hey, ready for another show, man? Yeah, man, and, and before I, you know, mention what I'm doing, how the week has been, if this is what I like about, first of all, live radio, second of all, competition. And this is very interesting, man. If you look at Twitter, you know, we just saw uh, there was a post by Operation Sports confirming that Madden 16 will be dropping on August the 25th, and it says information will arrive in May. So that's when you can, you know, be excited about that, guys, because depending on what information, well, not depending on, but, of course, whatever information is given at that time, we'll be able to elaborate on at that time. So be excited about that. But then also, like Azul said, (laughs) a little bit before that, Damon posted, you know, another screenshot, 
you know, looks pretty good. You know, facial wise looks pretty good. Now I, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna be like, you know, how one of those overcritical people. <laughs> so one could look at their hair and be like, what's going on with their hair? <laughs> their hair has looked the same on all of the screenshots, so that's a little funny. But anyway, that's just a little joke. Screenshot looks wonderful, but my point is, there's two games. This is two football games that are releasing information on the same day, and we're talking about it. Love that. But we're going to get more into the Joe Montana thing once we dive into the topics. But as far as myself, man, I've had had a pretty good week. Um, today I'm beginning a uh, – me and my wife are doing – I don't know the exact name of it, but it's this – this 10-day cleanse that, you know, my brother and other people have introduced us to, and it mainly consists of smoothies, you know, for, and it's not, you know, not your regular smoothie. It's a smoothie that includes, like, kale or spinach and things like that and fruit. So and, what you're trying to say to him is if you disappear for a long stretch of time during the show, we already know yeah. what's up. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I might have you know, something to do with, with it. Me man. and Smitty should have set this up before, but uh, our boy, one of the Sim Standards' own, had a birthday on April 15th, so shout out to Sim and his birthday a couple of days ago. Well, yesterday. Yeah, man. Yep. Definitely appreciate that, man. You know, every new year, man, we, we, we blessed to see him, so I love it. Oh, and let me say something about that real, real quick. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say this real fast. I know everybody is different. But this is just me. Maybe y'all can help explain it to me. Why do so many people want to know your age? Like guys in particular. I don't understand that. Like you you never you never really hear me and not not saying nothing's wrong with it. Don't don't take it out of context. What I'm saying is just me how I move, I never really ask, yo, how old are you, man? I ain't never asked to do that. Never <laughs> asked me that. I just I don't I mean, y'all would be surprised how many people say, How old are you? Why do you care? I, I, I don't know. I mean, we all, everybody knows here on the show, all of us here are 80s babies. So that's all I'll give you. But I don't need to tell you my exact age. I don't, I don't really understand why that matters. But anyway, get back to what I was saying. Yeah, man, we're we trying this out, man. You know, a lot of people are saying it's good, you know, not necessarily for like, you know, losing weight and all that, but, you know, really just to kind of clean out your system. So we're doing that. So, you know, wish me luck. I'm going to stick to it because anything I say I'm going to do, I put my mind to it, and I don't let the temptation get to me, which it already has today. <laughs> but i got nine more days, man, to do this, and we'll see how it works. But let's go ahead and get into these topics because, man, this this could run us a little while, especially now we got some more information out there with a little bit in regards to Madden and Joe Montana just talking about the whole competition thing. But first and foremost, man, we're going to talk about, I know Azul would really like this topic, um, microtransactions in gaming. You know, we're going to talk about how we feel about them in general. Do they help? Do they hurt? Do they ruin the gaming experience totally? But also take a different approach at it as well. Like, like things like Ultimate Team, does that allow microtransactions and normal gaming to coexist? So we'll definitely jump into that topic. The next thing we definitely want to talk about, man, is physics being harder to produce than a football game. Now, this actually caused a little bit of stir. Um, you know, one of the guys on Twitter asked, uh, now verbatim, well, semi-verbatim, he says that why is it so hard for Madden to do it when 2K8 was able to do it perfectly? Now, last time I checked, there is no real-time physics in all-pro football. Maybe I, you know, I could be wrong, but I don't recall any – real-time physics being in that game. So I'm not really understanding your comparison there. If you're listening, please call in. You know, maybe you misunderstood what I was saying and vice versa, but we're going to talk about that, man, because it's, it's a little more to it than what I think a lot of people know. You know, why is it easier for physics to be shown in hockey and FIFA and, e and maybe even boxing? And we're going to give you some perspective on that. We actually were able to gain some, you know, some knowledge from, one of the, de the developers, you know, that we are able to talk to recently, and hey, it, it brought it shed some light on something that I think we've already touched on, but but we'll dive further into it once we get to that area. But the last but not least, man, this might be the most popular topic of the night. We're going to talk about hip hop gamer and his uh, public perception overall. 
And what we're going to basically talk about is, you know, why is it that he gets such a bad rep? You know, it, he is a journalist. You know, it, he basically does what journalists, what they do. You know, there's some information that Hip Hop Gamer puts out there. And if you really listen to it, he's really connecting a lot of dots. But for some reason, you know, he gets a lot of hate thrown his way. And you know, like I said, we'll dive to that when we get to it. But, you know, I want to make a personal claim myself in regards to that. But we also want to break down some of the key points that were mentioned in his video in, in regards to Joe Montana. A lot of jewels he dropped in there that I think some people may have overlooked. So we, we're going to jump all over that. But let's go ahead and hit these microtransactions, man. Let's get these first two topics out the way because I, I can see us spending some time with the whole hip-hop gamer situation in Joe Montana. But Smitty, man, uh, microtransactions, how do you feel about them in general as far as you know, helping, hurting, or ruining the game, and can they actually coexist with you know with regular gaming? Um, actually, actually, yes, they can, because this is something that has been going on since the PC gaming day. If you know, and this is the thing with you know with PC gaming not really being the forefront in terms of all genres or not everybody owning a gaming PC per se, they wouldn't be able to experience the microtransaction element to the fullest extent. And this was something we had touched on a little bit before. If you remember the game, this was back in like 1998, Tom Clancy Rainbow Six. Okay. Now, when that came out, that game had like two or three DLC packs. You know, or they were add-ons. You know, they were add-ons. They were like different maps. I think some of them had weapons in it or what have you, but you had to pay You had to pay the additional money. Now, you didn't have a season pass or anything like that. You didn't have any of that stuff. You know, and um, this was around the time where you had a game in EverQuest where you had, um, I mean, now don't quote me on it, but this, I, as far as I know, at least, that was like one of the very first MMORPGs that you had to pay to play. You know what I'm saying? You had to put in the credit card info and all that stuff, and you had to pay a monthly fee to play the game. You know, and these are things that weren't truly, you know, natural in these games. When we played these games on console, you know, at the time, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Saturn, you know, all those consoles, we're accustomed to getting everything in one shot. You know, if there was anything additional, we got it all on that cartridge, all on that CD. You know what I mean? So when I look at uh, when I look at it, you know, when you fast forward from then to now, now you got the season passes and all that stuff. You know, at first people weren't really hip to it; they weren't really cool with it. Like, oh, I don't like the fact that I got to pay to play and all that and extra. That's been part of the PC gaming scene all this time, though. That's been a model for certain games. You pay you 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 pay this money. You pay the money to buy the game. You pay this additional money, and you can get these mods, or you can get these these add-ons that add even more to the game. You know these additional levels. Now we can all look at it as nickel and diamond. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're playing games on console, you're accustomed to getting the whole shebang right there. So, um, but when we look at sports gaming, at least, let's focus it there, and we look at games like Madden with the Ultimate Team, can it exist? Yes, it can. It's, it's, and like I said, that's why I bring up, that's why I brought up PC gaming, because it existed there, so I don't see how it could not exist here. It's just more of a shock. Initially, it's a shock, because... Back then, when we talked about this stuff, you were talking about getting boosts when it came to scouting players and stuff like that, Madden cards even, these player boosts and all that. This is stuff that you would get for free in the game, you know, playing Madden on PS2 and Xbox days. So, yeah, it was kind of a step, it was kind of a step back a little bit, like, oh, wait a second, you charging for all this now? Really? Like, so, yeah, so it was, it, you know, I'm not saying that it's okay. But what I'm saying is that it was accepted on another platform level back then. Looking at it now, I, I like I'm I'm not with the microtransaction bit, but 
at the same time, I do like the fact that I can play a mode like an ultimate team or my team, and I don't have to necessarily pay anything, and I can play. You know, I can still get down in those modes. Now, if I truly want to excel, then I'm going to have to pay money. And that was the whole element we talked about, like, I think like two months ago, well, I brought up collecting cards. You know, you got your regular edition cards that, you know, you pay $2 or $3 or whatever, and you get a pack of 15, but you pay five or six bucks and you get this pack of, of five cards. And these, but, but these are the special edition. It's the same principle. You know what I'm saying? We got this limited edition pack. Pay this money and you can get X amount. Like, it's the same principle. We did it when we was kids back then, you know, when we seen the commercial for the skybox and the upper deck and all that. It's the same principle now. It's not different. But gaming-wise, yes, it can work. It's just that you need the gameplay to be a lot more authentic if you're going to go this route. So I'll just say this, and I'll pass it to Azura. Please understand, I know people have their frustrations with Madden and everything an ultimate team and all that jazz. But if you think for one second that 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 Joe Montana is not going to go down that road, oh, it's going to go down that road. You went for a rude awakening. It's going to go down that road because they want to make money. And, and all these companies are out here to make money. They, they want to satisfy fans, but at the same time, they're about getting that money. So it's going to, it's, it's going to take effect. You know, at some point, it may not be the first game, but at some point, it's going to happen. Just like all the stuff, the cheese and the exploits and the money plays, all that stuff is coming. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. So that's why one thing we preach here on this show, we've said it many times over, that you got to play these games with like-minded people. It doesn't matter how well they design the game. If you're not playing with like-minded people, you're going to see all the cheesy stuff come out and all that stuff happen. That's just the way it is. So I'll pass it over to Azura. Appreciate that. And as a, a a business mind and a business minded individual, microtransactions, love them. If that was something that I could think about, you know, doing in my business, I do it. It's brilliant. On the other coin, as a consumer, I hate them. <clears throat> and one of the reasons I hate them is because We've seen them in the past, and not microtransactions, but the, the first example that comes to mind is Mutt. You used to be able to earn the cards in Madden from doing different, completing different challenges and goals and all this kind of stuff. That would unlock you those type of cards. Now they just give you the model to where, you know, you can buy a couple packs, you may or may not get a card. And I wish it was more so along the lines of, let's just say, one of the perks of getting a 99 overall Barry Sanders of playing a 32-man or playing an online uh, CFM and winning the Super Bowl or something like that. You know, I don't, the pay model I don't really appreciate because, like I said, I want to see you – make the gamer play the game more or play more game modes to unlock stuff rather than just, oh, forget that. I'm not going to waste any time on that. I'm just going to pay for it. Just like we saw with NBA 2K, it's going to be several months before you see a legend or somebody with 99 overall. (laughs) Two months into the game, 94 overall, 95 overall, which is the same. Uh, That was less than two days. Huh? That was less than two days. Oh, well, two days. That went two months. 94, 94 <laughs> overall, 95 overall. And then, <laughs> which is the same as having the 99 overall when you have players who just come in and say, yeah, I'm just going to earn my man, and we start off at 60, and this dude's a 90. See, that's the annoying stuff. So, to me, if you get to where you have to where people earn things and unlock things, by doing different things in your game, that's more of a reward to play the game more. Um, either Because, truth be told, you don't have to purchase MUT cards to be successful. We've seen people play free-to-play MUT, uh, for example, and be successful with their team. So, you know, the notion out there that you can't be successful, 
you know, not using money, that has been dispelled before. We've seen it on YouTube. People, there's free-to-play players on um, YouTube to put up gameplay and are pretty successful. But the fact of the matter remains is they exist. And to me, they're annoying because they will progress, like Smitty said, and if you don't think that new games like Joe Montana will eventually get them, you're sadly mistaken. It will start off as a community thing, but the bottom line is money. And for them to keep improving on their product, you have to make money because that money has to come from somewhere, especially if they're not turning a profit um, off of not being on multiple, multiple platforms. So let's just say this game comes out on Xbox One and PC. You've already niched and cut yourself into a corner of consumers to whereas if this game was on PS4, you know, Xbox One, PC, et cetera, then, you know, you, you're reaching a larger audience. But, you know, there are individuals out there who will support the game. But microtransactions as a whole, I don't like them. Because if you don't do that, then you need to reduce the price of the game to me because you're making so much money off microtransactions, then cut back some of the price of the game. Like, it, to me, it makes no sense that um, NBA 2 – now, I'm just looking digitally. NBA 2K14 is still $60 digital. Are, are, are you kidding me? Seriously? And the server is not even available? Well, I said they cut them back home, but still, you know, the stuff that they did, you got to – the more business and money creeps into the thing, the worse it gets. And it it just – it happens with everything. I, I even liken it to YouTube. To me, in YouTube, when it was before partnerships and all that, you had, you know, more creative ideas, more individuals who were just putting out videos for the hunt, in front of it. Now you got people who will do, you know, who have large followers who just go into a video, I'm going to do a pack opening. And it's them opening a pack of cards. But it gets 20,000, 30,000 views. But there was nothing creative about the video. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say, you know, when money gets into a thing, it tends to ruin it. But in my idea, I mean, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, my personal belief, judgment, feeling, or idea, not a fact, don't take it as that, you need to lower the price of the game. Because to be honest, most of uh, Madden and probably FIFA too, they're not making you uh, – turn the profit off of selling the game, it's more so the microtransaction. So right now they're getting money hand over fist, selling you the game for $60. Then you have those individuals. And I know one individual personally who spent over $1,000 on MUT. So you paid 1000 plus 60 for a game that you're about to buy, purchase new because Madden 16 is going to come out. You're not going to be playing Madden 15 MUT. So <laughs> these companies are raking in the dough. And to me, you know, if you're going to treat your consumer like that, it has to be some perks to being treated like that because Madden 16 is going to come out, and we we spoke about this before. It renders the other cars useless. So all that work you did, I mean, unless you can port the team over, but why would they do that? Why would they not make you start over? That doesn't make good money sense. So I'll pass it back to Sam, and, and, you know, he can give his thoughts on it. But as a consumer, I hate them, and I hate the way that they've crept into sports games and and things of that nature. But we'll see, you know, what happens in the future, but I don't think they're going anywhere. And I think, too, because I know the business side of things, like you said, I understand it. And, I mean, it's just the way of the future. You see a lot of different companies, not just gaming, there's just a whole lot of, you know, different pay or micro transactions or, you know, get them, you know, even something like a, you know, all kinds of services. You you got the regular one and you got the premium one and then you got, you know, it's just, so I understand that. But my only problem would be if it ever gets to a point where it's required, 
And that's when I got a real issue. Because right now, the reason why I can deal with it is because it's a choice. Like you said, you know somebody who spent over $1,000. I can choose not to do that. And currently, I can choose to play these modes without spending money. So as long as you keep it that way, I don't have a big problem with it because like you and Smitty both said, it's all about business. It's all about making money. I definitely feel like there should be a bigger reward, though. I mean, <laughs> obviously, like you said, they ain't going to allow nobody to roll their team over because why would you do that? But then again, you know, you say that, but then again, it's people who spend on much all year. So if they did roll their team over, all they're going to do is continue to keep working that team. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, at the end of the day, you could kind of be like, well, maybe you could let them roll it over and they still going to spend money because you still going to get X amount of people who will be new to the mode in whatever game it is, not just Madden, but you're still going to get new people all the time. And the people who, matter of fact, the people who roll the team over might spend more money because now they know I'm going to just keep pumping this team up, keep pumping them, keep pumping them, you know, until I get... So the, the next game, I'm going to come into it with a B squad. And then it would be up to the company to deliver more players. So that could probably work. But at the end of the day, man, like I said, my thought on it would be as long as you keep it to where there's a choice, whatever, do what you got to do, make the money, we understand. But the minute you have it to where it's a required thing, then that's when I'm going to have a huge problem with it. Like a, a real big problem with that situation. So it is what it is, man. That, that's really what the point I wanted to make is, and both of you guys pretty much already covered it to some degree, is it, you have a choice. So in some of the people that you see that really complain about it, I mean, like I see people daily, but I'm like, then don't do it. Like I see people. People will be complaining about what? Man, this, this, and that. Nah, 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 nah. I'm spending all this money. I'm not. Well, why are you doing it? If it ain't, it's, it's just like the casino. And I understand. Don't get me wrong, mutt players. Like, I know a lot of guys who are heavy into mutt. Don't get me wrong. If you spend a good amount of money, there should be more chances for you to pull a, a great pack or, you know, an elite player. I agree with that. But, again, I got to use my casino analogy. How many people go in the casino and how many of them actually win big? You choose to do that. So you, I feel like if it ain't working or if you're losing too much money, stop doing it. Like, as long as you got a choice, I can't really feel you on your complaint on that side of it as far as, man, I keep losing money. I can't feel you on that because that's your choice. But I do agree there should be a little more reward. Or even if they could tell, like, if my account, they know I'd have got to the five thousand dollar mark. Maybe we start letting this guy pull some better packs. But that's kind of how I feel about the whole thing, man. But moving on, let's talk about these physics and football games. This is going to be an interesting topic because you hear so many things, man, in the community. You know, I remember way back to when we first started talking about physics in a football game. You know, a lot of us started saying that. I can recall, and I don't know the year, but I can recall me saying I wanted to see physics in a football game even way back even like when Fight Night had physics. Because before, I'll be honest, I didn't know necessarily that it had to be a physics engine. What I was basing my thing, my thoughts on was like how other games played and how you know, even if you play like a game like 2K5, or even back in old Madden, it seemed like the physics aspect like was being respected. But I didn't realize that, you know, it needed real-time physics. I just understood game physics. But when Fight Night came out, I can't remember which one it was. I think it might have been round three, probably. The, one, the very first one that had real-time physics. I remember all of us saying, wait a minute now. You putting it in boxing first? Well, what about football? But anyway, the reason why I bring all of that up is because we're going to talk about why we feel that, you know, it's a little more difficult than 
than everyone might think and might realize. And, you know, it, we're just going to give our insight on that. I'm going to throw it around to the guys and then come back to me, but we definitely want to address it, man. You know, and why do you, why do you think, Smitty, why do you feel like it's harder in a football game to produce physics more so than, like, say, your NHLs or your FIFA or your fight night or, you know, any other game, maybe a UFC, any other game that has physics, why is it more difficult to pull off and pull off well in a football game? Well, I think that it's harder to do in a football game because you have 22 players colliding, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot going on. There's a lot more going on from a physics standpoint when you have that many guys going at it at once versus on a soccer field. Like, even a soccer field has 22 players, but they're not all interacting at once. That's the whole thing. They're not, you know what I mean? Like, they're not they're not all bunching up against each other and ramming into each other and all that stuff. So, uh, even same thing with baseball. It's not the exact same deal. Like, if anything, they're colliding at the plate, or you may have two players run into each other going after one ball, you know, a pop fly or something like that. So, you know, uh, but, yeah, when we look at football, gaming, and we see how it is, like, we've seen physics in football done best in backbreaker at this point, but even then it had a lot of holes in it. It had a lot of problems. You know, and just and, – and, and, and when we look at Madden, this is a funny thing. In this community and everything, from what's been said, one moment Vic Lugo was commended for what for what he did, but then the next moment now everything, he need, everything that he did needed to be took out the game, which is one of the funny things that I see in regards to this game. I mean, when, when we're talking about Madden, per se – but the thing is, is, the part that's being missed is the hardship of building the game up, building up the sport of football using real-time physics. Backbreaker, Backbreaker gave you what they got with three years' worth of work in the background behind closed doors. These dudes didn't have they didn't have that they didn't have the same exact luxury. They didn't have years where they could just take Madden off the shelf and just work on it for years at a time and say, okay, we're going to get this implemented. Because if people remember, physics wasn't even going to make it in in Madden 13. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even going to make it. So it, it, it ended up making it in to the game. And that's a big undertaking to add that element into the game. Because look at other games that have implemented that, that try that, well, I'd say that try that are still in the process of implementing real-time physics. You got WWE. They still don't have true physics. Player weight does not truly matter. They just put a restrictor on saying, oh, you know, you have your lightweight moves and heavyweight moves. It's not like how it was back on uh, N64 where if I took Rey Mysterio and tried to power slam the giant, it ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not happening. But WWE and that Predator technology they have in there that's supposed to be their physics engine, look how many, I think they're on like year, I think like year three or four of having those physics, and it still isn't there yet. So that goes to show you. And you're talking about at max six characters in the ring at once. We're talking about 22 players with a good number of them engaging anytime any position, any instance in real time, and you want that stuff to sync up perfectly, that's going to be extremely hard to pull off, especially when you're talking about, oh, yeah, by the way, our product is still behind. We're we're still working on issues, and we're trying to build this up. So they can't devote, and I know, Sim, you brought this up before, but, I mean, this is something that we definitely know of from talking to devs and everything. These guys don't have the development time to just go ahead and spend all the quality time on just one area like that. The game's not there yet. Like, they don't have the time, the effort, and the resources to be able to do it. They just don't have enough time. So they can only realistically do what they can over the course of a development cycle. And, ta- and, and tackling something like this, like taking on physics like this, 
it's a very big undertaking. So when you see how many years has it took for FIFA to get physics right in their game, and they still are a work in progress with their physics, even though it does look good, but there's still some wonky stuff that happens with theirs. Uh, NHL. Sim, you got it now. Now you can play it from first-hand experience, and you've shown some stuff in the live stream. Even those physics. Yeah. And that's from five years' worth of work. They just now got it where you got 12-man physics. 12-man dynamic physics and the puck physics are, are individual. And even with that, the stick is not always uh, 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 respected. The hockey puck is not always respected. And the body is not fully respected at all times. So if that game, as good as that looks, still doesn't have it right, what makes you think that Madden is going to have it right? And it's only been three games so far with them having physics. So it's it's something that's going to progressively take time for them to build up realistically. And that's just the thing. Like, it, it, I believe that they'll get it there, but it's just going to take them time to get the game to that point where it's truly going to – you're truly going to see that signs of life of, okay, you know what? These guys are on the right track with these physics now. Like, they really seem to have their feet up underneath them now with these physics. So, you know, I'll pass it to Azura. Yeah, and I, I, don't, I won't have too much to talk, uh, say on this topic because you <clears throat> pretty much covered it. But you have to think about in football as well, unlike, you know, any other sport I can really think of, each position or position group has its own techniques and running styles and, and – you you wouldn't want your cornerback to um, kick slide like offensive linemen, and, and you wouldn't want your offensive linemen to backpedal like running back. I mean, backpedal like cornerbacks, and you wouldn't want your running backs to be like your linebackers and so forth. So it's just it, it's a another layer of not only them colliding, but them being in proper technique, proper form. Uh, right fundamentals and all this kind of stuff to where, as you know, in a basketball game, you know, five on five, each player runs up the court. They might have different running styles, but they're pretty much, you know, running up and down the court. Same thing with FIFA. You know, <clears throat> they're pretty much, you have two or three, four players maybe interacting, but they're running up and down the field almost independently. But in football, it's a whole different story. And football, I mean, sports is unpredictable as it is, so you have that element of unpredictability. But Smitty says this all the time. There's unpredictable chaos in football. And that's something that you have to try to replicate and think a reason why you haven't seen too many companies try to get up and tackle it is because of all that goes into it. It takes a lot to put out a football game. And if you go to the bare essentials and, and break it down from its uh, bare core, from building up, you're going to have a hard time doing it. And we saw that with Backbreaker. Backbreaker didn't have, you know, the technique and all the um, visual aesthetics of the position that you would like to see, especially the quarterback. The quarterback was horrendous. So... I mean, and if you think about that now, technique-wise, man doesn't seem so bad, does it? But you have individuals in the community who who will, you know, still downplay it and say that football can't be played in Madden. And um, I see people on Twitter now getting excited over that screenshot that Damon Grow put out. And one of the things that we say in the Sim Standard community or in the community, the Sim community, in general, hasn't it always been gameplay over graphics? Don't ever confuse that. Gameplay will always be graphics. That's the reason why people can play old games, 2K5, Madden, 04, All Pro Football, 2K8. You can go back and play those games because gameplay, you enjoy the gameplay. Graphically, it's terrible. And one of the things that we say about Madden at its current state, if you just take a still picture of Madden, it's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. 
Now, I got you know, one that can post right now. Right. I mean, <laughs> now, when this thing gets to moving, it's a different story. But just still pictures, you might see one from far away and be like, yo, <laughs> that looks real. But and, what matters is when you say hut, what happens? So for all these people on Twitter getting hyped over graphics, hold your horses. As I often say with 2K, they do the same thing with 2K. I see people do the same thing every year. Oh, my God, look at LeBron's headband. It sits right up on his head. Please, wait till the game comes out and play the game and see. Because that's all that matters. Gameplay is what sustains you. There's great-looking games that come out all the time. But if they don't have gameplay, they won't go past two, three months. So that's just something that I saw when I was looking at my Twitter feed, people getting hype over the screenshot that he put. And, you know, one of the dudes that follows us says it's better than any football game he's ever seen. Yeah, come on. Yeah. That's not, like, that's not even a real face. I mean, you can see Calvin Johnson in Madden, and, and his face looks like Calvin Johnson. We don't know who this dude is that, you know, Damon Grow tweeted. So, Let's temper your temper your excitement until they actually put out some gameplay. Now, when I when I see some eleven on eleven action and, and actually see uh, whether it be E three or whether Damon Grove puts it out, but the only thing we've seen from this game motion wise was Joe Montana and the quarterback drop back. So until we see some more, it, it's just going to be what it is. Don't get hype over graphics and gameplay always beats graphics. I'll pass it to Sam. Yeah, man. It, and I'll save a little bit for when we talk about Joe Montana, but like I said, if I was one of those people, if I was a nitpicker like we used to be called back in the day, we have seen two screenshots, well, at least I've seen two, of a face. One lighter gentleman, one darker gentleman. They both have the same exact hat. And the reason why I say that is just to prove the point. If we were gonna if we're gonna get all overly excited or break down screenshots, come on man. Then you would have to you would have to get that critical and say, wait a minute, what kind of hairstyles are they? And that's the thing. People ain't gonna do that. They just gonna say how beautiful it is. Come on, man, let's wait till we see some gameplay. <laughs> These are next gen consoles. I don't expect nothing less from any game. Than to be beautiful, especially after seeing the order eighteen eighty six. Yes. So, come on with the graphic thing, but, but I'm gonna save a little bit until we get to the Joe Montana. But in regards to the physics, man, and the reason why I wanted to discuss this tonight is because what these guys have already said. Of course, we steal each other's thunder. Basically, everything that I was gonna say, but I'll add a little bit to it. See, the the beauty of being able to talk to developers and the beauty of you guys having the ability, I ain't going to say the ability, let's just say the beauty of you guys having guys like us who are willing to do radio shows, still do YouTube videos and stuff like that to inform you is that we can tell you some things that you probably won't never hear from other people just because they don't bother with it. No fault to them, but... We're, we are a valuable asset to you guys because we are still community-oriented, so I always want to share whatever I can share. So let's get to what I'm going to say. You know, I've had the pleasure of speaking with actual devs at EA, of course. And I asked them that question. I said, hey, you know, my idea when I thought when physics was in the game, you know, me being naive when it came in Madden 13, I'm thinking it's going to be physical all over the field and the receivers and the, and the DBs can fight in and, and the trenches. And I just thought it was going to be physical all over the field. Well, as we all know, it's not like that. It still isn't like that in Madden 15. Smitty made a great point. NHL has just got it to the point where it's 12 men at a time that can have a physical reaction. Now, the truth is, and this was something that we logically figured out ourselves, but I was actually told this. you got to think about it like this, Sam. 
He said, in football, you watch football. He's like, and he even gave me a shout out on my team. He said, hey, you watch AFC North football. Is there a player on that field that's not being physical on every snap? I had to sit back and say, oh, okay, I see, I see where you're going. I, know, I see where you're going already. He was like, it's just that real. 22 men interacting and having all of the physical outcomes react the correct way, all of the mass, all of the, you know, the, the collisions and the momentum, I mean, away from the ball, all of that stuff calculating and running at the same time. Not only is it a lot of work, that takes a whole lot of, you know, resources as far as RAM and stuff like that. Now, I don't want to get into all that. I, we all know these are big, bad consoles. So I, I can't walk down that road saying what they could or what they should be able to do. But this was just the explanation. Now, believe me, that's what they are shooting for. This is the reason why physics was even put in the game, like Smitty alluded to, the point is with physics is trying to get these sports games to play appropriately with physical interaction. Because believe it or not, as much as you guys might not want to hit it, all of your favorite games, those are canned physics. Every one of them. Even MLB. It's canned. It's not real. Those are, those, they don't have real-time physics in that game. The ball has ball physics, but like when they hit the wall and all of that, that that happens. It's an animation. Looks beautiful. And again, I'm not knocking that. We love 2K5 even still and APF. But I'll tell you this much. When you play all pro football, you can see where physics is not at. Let's be honest with ourselves for a minute. You can look at that game and you can even say, even though Madden ain't, ain't, it still doesn't do it the way it needs to be, there are times in that game you could be like, that wouldn't have happened to Madden, believe it or not. Not because Madden is better, but because of the physical reaction that Madden can give you at times and is improving. You, you understand what I'm saying? Or more importantly, let's take Madden out of the equation. You would look at APF and be like, man, if that was backbreaker, mm 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 like, there's a whole lot of tackle animation in both APF and Madden still, because it's not all the way physical, that you know the outcome before it even before it ends. You already, you already know, but you've seen it so many times. So that's my point. It's harder than you guys think, man. And, and, and instead of arguing all the time and, like, trying to, you know, and I'm, I'm going to say argue because I know it's not aimed at me. I get a lot of questions and guys want me to ask, you know, the devs. Instead of always taking that approach, kind of listen to what we're telling you because, remember, we know. We're there. We know what's happening. These are the questions that we ask right out the gate. Smitty know, and they know, both of the Azul and yeah. Smitty know. We sit there, and, and there's times I'm like, hey, man, like, why don't this work the right way? And I was telling a buddy of mine this earlier today. I was like, the beauty of – having a you know a relationship with the devs, believe it or not, and we'll tell you guys right here on the show, it's not always, you know, suit and tie and, sir, why does this happen? Uh, and yes, sir, and raise my hand. It ain't like that. We be chilling. We be casually kicking it with these guys, having real conversation. And believe it or not, the devs often say, ah, I just don't like the way this works right now. We got to get this fixed. Believe it or not. Now, I bet you the guys who go to 2K team up, they can say the same thing about those devs. Their battlefield mm -hmm. game changes, they could probably say the same thing about those devs. It, that's how it should be. It should be a cordial relationship. <laughs> it shouldn't be, you know, what are you doing? And it, it, that, that ain't going to work. Who's going to listen to that? Would you listen to that? But I'm trying to tell you how how much of the the fact that these guys know what needs to be done and we're privileged enough to even help influence it, that ain't something just to, you know, to just, you know, chuck that in the wind and be like, oh, whatever. But, you know, this this is an opportunity, and this is why we continue to do this. Like I said, it ain't because of us. We could do it quietly. I like to get you guys involved, so we want you guys more involved. But... 
sorry to run on a little bit there, but the physics thing, man, I, I'm, I'm just saying, it's, it was broken down to me that way, and I understood it, made sense, so I want to share it with you guys. It's not as easy as we all thought. Because y'all heard the video, you've heard us all do it in the past, especially me. I've done it so many times with this. Player of stature has to matter. And I, I've said it a thousand times. But now I'm being taught from the guys and the engineers, not just the dads. We know, man. <laughs> we know. We're going to get there. But it just takes time. And they actually show you why. Like, remember when me and Smitty, and Azura said it too. Back in the Madden 13 days, we actually had the ability, you know, when Vic was still there, shout out to Vic. He was like, here. I'm going to give you some of these debug tools. Go go mess around with it yourself. Because what's one of my biggest complaints that people hear, that ball. I hate that ball going behind the back. And the ball, I'm like, that ball needs to come out. Man, I fooled around with some of the settings. That ball was popping out every two seconds. You know why? Because I have no idea <laughs> what the mathematics is. The calculations, I had, I'm just fooling around. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm, I made, basically made the game at that moment unplayable because every time the ball got grazed, it popped out. Now, that don't happen in football, does it? So my point is, it's a delicate balance, but they are trying to make these games completely physics-based. And the last thing I'll say before we go to the next topic, in, rel- you know, in reference to backbreaker. Smitty already said it. Backbreaker was phenomenal with grass, I mean, with uh, physics. But, like we said, versus pointed out plenty of times, the problem in the physics, the lifeless body, no weight and mass, the moon boot effect. The physics was beautiful on collision. But outside of that, it's a little crazy. And it was a bare bones game. And why do you think that is? Maybe because they had to put so many resources into physics, there won't much more they could get done. Yeah. So that's all it is, guys. We we just try to break down what we are learning about game development, Re- regardless of if it's Madden or, you know, hopefully with Joe yeah. Montana we get the opportunity to be able to see that as well, and we can tell you some stuff. Who knows? And hold on, before you go forward, I just wanted to say two points real quick. First of all, mm-hmm. I, I, it was said that it was said that Batbreaker was not a Triple A title. Batbreaker was a Triple A title. That's one thing I want to point that out. Uh, and the second thing is that it was from the APF and even 2K5 perspective. There's a reason why, when it came to you picking your plays in 2K, that you had to pick your you had to pick what your defensive line was going to do before you picked your play call, because that outcome was already predetermined. So it's it, it just looked it just looked awesome because you had the nice visuals as far as animations were concerned. But if you pick your base, your twist, your razor right, razor left, whatever, it didn't matter. That was scripted. No matter what. So that's one thing. When you look at Madden, especially now on next gen when you look at Madden and you see how the pocket is forming dynamically and yet you see all the problems that happen with the O-line, that's why. Because it's not predetermined before you pick. You know what I'm saying? That trench battle is not picked up, It's not picked out before you, you select the play. You know, when things can happen organically, and when you have organic things happening, you're going to see some funky stuff go awry. That's why when it came to backbreaker, like what Sim just said, for the good it had, you had a lot of jacked up plays that happened in there too. But we spotlighted a lot of the good stuff and not really much of the bad when it came to backbreaker. But you had a lot of plays where O linemen were illogically blocked, just stand around in space, not block anybody and just be sitting there looking confused. That's the exact same stuff that we saw in Madden twenty five and Madden fifteen happen. Because when you're trying to implement, or that's that's what happens when you're doing organic implementation, and you're trying to have that once again that 22 man dynamic going on. You open up that potential for those problems. They just got to get it to work right. But you know that's gonna, that's something that's going to come with time. So I just want to make those points real quick, though. Yeah, man, you 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 have to be. 
at least in our line of work, I guess I would say, you got to see everything for what it is. And I, I plan to do the same thing for Joe Montana, man. I'm going to praise all of the greatness that I'm expecting, hopefully. Then also, you know, things that they need help in, I'm going to point that out. Y'all know that. That's that's what I do on the channel. Because if you don't do it, how are they going to get better? Because I already know. I already know what's going to happen. Uh, like a lot of people that don't really prefer Madden I already know they're going to say, oh, he's just doing that because cause that's happened to me when I pointed out stuff in 2 k Basketball. Uh you know, he, he's with EA, so he just, <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I can't I can't even give feedback no more. But anyway, man, let, moving on to the next topic, and this is gonna be a good one, man. I, I'm looking forward to this topic. And I I, I guess I, I might kick it off a little bit because I you know, I have something a little different that I want to say in regards to it. But anyway, we're gonna talk about hip hop gamer and his public perception. And also talk about the video that he put out recently in regards to uh, the possibility of NFL 2K returning and, you know, him giving his thoughts and perspective on Joe Montana. He basically was discussing a lot of things in regards to, you know, conversations he's had with industry people, you know, and this is going to lead to my point as well. You know, obviously he knows a lot of these people. You know, we all know that. So I, I don't understand sometimes why his perception is so bad. And I'm going to go on record right here. I hope he's listening. I'm going to apologize to Hip Hop Gamer because I've been guilty of doing that in the past. You know, as far as not him, because, you know, I met the guy at E3. Good dude. Smitty remembers. Good dude, man. Like, very humble. Oh, yeah. Good dude. You know what I mean? So yeah. I had to start looking at it differently. I had to check myself and be like, so why do I really... You know, why have I ever had an opinion about his reporting? Here's why. It's the same reason why all y'all do. We so ready for a 2K game or another game. If anybody says anything remotely close to it and it's a rumor, a lot of us take that as fact and we blame the guy. Rumor it happened to me. Y'all remember that? <laughs> and I got my information from a valid source. But guess what? That person didn't work for 2K, so it was out of his control. But with Hip Hop Gamer, another thing that people kind of forget, and like I said, I had to check myself. He's a journalist. This is what he does. You, if you go look at that man's video, Hip Hop Gamer ain't no just a football guy, just a basketball guy. He does he does journalism on all of these games. He's a more of a journalist type of guy. He's not a commentator. You understand what I'm saying? Like all he does is report information that he hears. I can't recall any time, and maybe he has. I don't know, but me personally, I can't recall any time when he said stuff to be a bona fide fact. Every time I've seen him say something about 2K. He's given us reason as, as to why he thinks or why he feels it will return because he's spoken to someone. And the reason why I said I apologize to him because I know I've done that to him in the past as well, saying stuff like, ah, oh, there he go, you know, I ain't going to believe. But it ain't right for me to do that because all that man is doing is all pretty much the same stuff we've done, <laughs> giving you information that he's heard. So my point for even bringing that part of it up is, and I'm going to let Smitty and Azur attack some of the other issues because I know they're going to hit it well. But my point of bringing that part up about hip-hop gaming is, like, as a community, we need to be more connected with anybody who is reporting on the things that we are involved with and take from it what you take from it. If you don't like him, cool. If you don't believe what he's saying, cool. But I'll tell you this, and my, my boys here are going to break it down, I'm sure. There's a lot of stuff that my man said in that video that connects a lot of dots, folks. A whole lot of dots. Some of the same dots that we've connected. Now, if we're able to do that, he's doing that. And some of the other guys out here on Twitter that we call like private investigators, come on, man. Some of this information has to be true because how is all of these different people finding some of the same stuff? 
So if you really listen to what he was saying, he dropped some real good jewels and hints in there. But like I said, I just wanted to speak on the perception aspect. Like, let's stop doing that. And, you know, I can't control what everybody does, but I'm saying there ain't no need to hate no hate on another guy, man, for doing what he's already done. That's his job. That's what he does. And like I said, I don't feel like that man has ever lied to me. All he's done is given information that he heard, same way I did when I heard 2K was going to be at E3. And, it is, you know, if you, if you, you know what I'm saying, if it hurts you that bad that another dude would say something like that, that's, that's a whole different story right there. So, like I said, apologies to you, Hip Hop Game. I, like I said, I know I've done that in the past, but as a man, a real man, I'm going to say that here on the show. If I ever slighted anything you said or said anything, never said anything out the way. It ain't how I do. But if I ever, you know, gave any condemnation that I was being funny towards your opinion, I'm going to apologize for that because at the end of the day, all you're doing is reporting the news. And I commend you for that because you ain't got to do that. But Smitty, man, go go ahead and let me know, man. I I know you and Azura both are itching to talk about some of these things that were easily connected in this video. So what were your thoughts in general, man? Anything you have to say about Hip Hop Gamer as well as the information that was given? Well, well I'd like to point out, because it's, it's been a moment since I had seen the video. Like, I didn't get a chance to check it out again, so I don't have – so all the points from it, are not like the points from it are not exactly truly fresh in my mind, but I will say this first and foremost: Hip Hop Gamer has been going to E3 for years, let alone just E3. He's been going to these other these other uh, gaming shows and things of that nature. These events they give a lot of information. I mean, it's you know what. One point that I have made. One point that I have made. Uh, to uh, uh, Sim, and this was when we was at E3 last year, just going up, talking to these guys, talking to different guys, different companies, different games and all that stuff, so much information we heard, I'm shocked that, I was shocked that we didn't have to sign an NDA before we walked through the door. You hear that much information, like they, you hear that much in-depth detail. Things we heard about NHL 15 before the game was even, before they put out any articles, it, it was crazy. It was crazy just hearing these up close details, seeing these things, talking and interacting with these devs and all that. Like it was nuts. Even the guys from the golf game, even you know, like talking with those guys. We talked to uh, my man from MLB The Show, oh, uh, Ramon Russell, yeah. talking with him. Yep. Like that golf so game was crazy. Much, it, you said what? Now, that golf game was crazy, by the way, and oh, I'm looking for yeah. that rugby game he was talking about. Yeah, yeah, but so much is put out there, and when you go, and that's just from us going, that's our first time going to one, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this dude's been going for years, and then he goes to all these other ones, con he's got contacts with all these people, goes to all these studios and everything. So... When you do that much, that's that's too much information to be subliminal about. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be subliminal about all these things. A rumor here, a thought here, a nugget here, a jewel there. We just do it for, we just do it in regards to EA and Matt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so just think what this dude is doing. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, yes, I definitely understand his side of what's going on and how it can be perceived because everybody can't go to E3. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can't uh, gain access to these companies like that and get that insight and information. And, yeah, that's the thing. All he's doing is, is reporting the news, which is which is going to create adversity because you're, you're saying something that a lot of people, you're saying things from a level that a number of people aren't going to truly understand because they're not in your position or they haven't had a chance to have a taste of where you're at. We we've had a taste of that, so we have a better understanding now versus back then. You know what I'm saying? Now he reports things his own way, so you know some things are a bit off the wall, but nevertheless, I still respect. You know what I'm saying? I respect the grind, though. And one thing, one example, like he tells it, he tells it the way it is. 
I'm going to make this point in regards to telling it the way it is. And this is a point that hasn't been put out there yet. And I know we're going to dive into it a little bit later, but I just want to make this point real quick and I'm pass it to Azur. We're looking at this Montana 16 right now, right? Montana 16 is on Unreal 4, okay? Now, we're speculating, even with the nice-looking screenshot and all that, we're speculating this game to be on Xbox One and PC. We know it's on PC, but we're we're looking at Xbox One potential. Now, the last time Microsoft had a game on their console platform that was specifically just Xbox, at this point, Xbox 360 and PC alone, and it was powered by Unreal 3. The last football game they had, black college football experience. Now, now, look at then that now now mind you that game play that game looked terrible that game was terrible, but if you look at now one thing is to look at is the studio that made the game that's one thing, but also look at it go on YouTube and look up a video demo of what the Unreal Three engine is capable of. If you see that video and then you look at that game, that's what that's the thing that has me extremely cautious about this community. I don't want to see people getting all overhyped and everything on stills because motion blur was capable on Unreal Engine 3. There was no motion blur in that BCFX. The closeness, the the player detail and having their hair all detailed and all that stuff, all that was capable on Unreal 3. That didn't happen in that black college football, though. It happened in Arkham City and all those other games. It happened there. But you didn't see it in the, in that sports game that was made, though. You saw it in Gears of War, but you didn't see it in that black college football. So, see, this is what I'm saying. It's cool to see a demo of all these other games, Unreal Tournament and all these other joints. That, that looks outstanding. You can show me all these great physics demos, just like what we saw with Natural Motion. They showed how their physics looked in a demo. But then... When we played Batbreaker, where was all that at? See, when it was in a football game, it wasn't all that clean out the gate. I'm just saying, people, be careful with all this hype over a screenshot and how something appears. We can take pics of Madden 15, show you the exact same thing. Like TJ Lowry, he literally did that. And it'll look virtually the same. No, No true difference. So... We need, that's why I'm emphasizing, I've been saying it for months. I need to see raw gameplay. Even when Damon came on the show, I said, I can't roll with you till I see that raw gameplay and see it running in motion raw, real time. Not no close-up shots of foot planting and all that. No. Give me raw gameplay that I can view of how this game is going to run in real time. I'll run with that. I'll go ahead and I'll pass it to Azur. And I got to give it to Smitty because... I hyped on I hopped on the hop train hype train early. And I I am still hopeful, wishful, um, about the game, but every time they put out a screenshot or just trickle some news along that I'm not seeing gameplay, the more my meter goes down. <clears throat> and other people probably are different. You know, people see his stuff today and go crazy off of a headshot. It, it didn't have anything to do with football, it was just a headshot. So my my whole thing is we haven't seen since black college football experience a game on Unreal Engine 4, and we just have to wait and see. And I'm getting to the point now to where, like I said, that energy, that little meter, starting to go down because I understand that E3 might be around the corner and that's probably your best platform if you want to get information out to gamers and, you know, maybe you're still working on some legalities of the game and all this, you know, I don't know. But as for someone who has been hopeful for a long time and seen information, like I said, just trickle out, Headshot here and there. First, it was just a head. Now it's a head and some shoulder pads. So maybe in two months, 
will get a full body uniform shot. So, I don't know, man. It's it's beginning to become annoying. Uh, the only good thing and the things I'm holding on to is tidbits. And this is I'm gonna go ahead and address the hip hop gamer because I kind of just piggybacked on what Smitty was talking about. But hip hop gamer just relays information. And we've had him on the show, and I've never met him, but he seems like a good, genuine dude. And I'm pretty sure that he, with the relationships that he's built in the industry, talks to people and gets some reliable information. And he probably gets some information that somebody probably just fed him and say, you know what, hey, he can get some information out there for us, get some feelers, see how people are feeling about it. And that's what happens. Because I ran with some information that I had from a source, me and uh, Sim, that we got from a good source. And it turned out to not be true. So until some things can be put in concrete, I I don't trust things um, to just go off information and screenshots. I need gameplay. I need dates. I need prices. And even with prices, because to me, they said NFL 2K was going to be a mobile app. It had a price and everything. Pulled. Ronnie 2K said it didn't exist. How is that when it had a price, when you had something that had a price? And and a review saying that it was coming down the pike. So with, you know, things being pulled back in the industry and, and stuff being so secretive, I just have to kind of wait and temper my expectations. But shout out to Hip Hop Game. I, hopefully he calls in, you know, because the first time we had him on the show, it was good. So and he can give some insight to how he's feeling because the first time he told us, you know, that 2K was scanning. Same thing he said in the video. 2K was messing around and scanning player spaces, and they had stuff ready to go should the license come open and all this kind of you know, jazz in here. And uh, to be honest, I've said this before, the fact that Joe Montana, if it comes out in this unlicensed, is putting out an unlicensed game before 2K would be ridiculous. That's shameful on 2K's part because you have a company that's smaller that says, you know what, are we going to tackle this giant? Are we going to try it for the community? Because as it stands now, without the license, they're probably not going to make that much money. So this would be a community effort if it's without the license. Now, if it's with the license, then that's a whole different story. That changes the ball game, and the complexion of the whole landscape of competition. But, you know, with Damon tweeting out what he did today and it's a generic uniform and him – checking in on 2K, all pro football, 2K H streams, and just me connecting some of the dots that I have, I think it's an unlicensed game. And until it's confirmed that it's not, then, or it confirmed that it, you know, will have a license, I'm just going to roll with what I think and my personal opinion and, and belief. But I don't know. Shout out to Hill Hop Gamer. If, he, if he's listening to the show, call in, man. We would love to hear from you again and get some more perspective from you on what you've heard and some of the things and clarify. Because, I mean, he, he even went on and touched about how he had a lawyer friend who said that monopolies cannot be, um, you know, EA's monopoly would have to end sometime soon uh, because you can't buy people out in, in a monopoly situation and, and keep them out monetarily. So, that's why I say, you know, if he can come on and clarify, maybe on another show, if he doesn't hear this in time, we'd love to hear from you, man. And I'll pass it back to Sam. Yeah, man, it is. <laughs> you guys know how it always works, man, with the show. <laughs> you know, it, the topics seem to take up a lot of time. So we had about 45 minutes now, so let me just go ahead and give the announcement for any guys who want to call in. And definitely, you know, if you're listening online, you can reach us at 914-338-0794. For any guys who are in the queue right now who would like to speak, please press 1. We'll bring you in. We see that there are six callers currently on the line. We're going to bring in 757 first. And right now, the only caller after that is 205. 
Um, but definitely, man, um, the last quick thing I would say about hip-hop game is video. You know, we don't really have the time tonight to discuss the whole thing. Would have, but, you know, good stuff. We just kept talking. So, <laughs> um, it's, no, it, it's, it's interesting that he also feels like it will not be licensed. If you haven't seen this video, go check it out. And, again, you know, it's, it's his opinion, his speculation, and information that he has gathered. Like Smitty said, we know from when we're at when we were at E3, it's a loose conversation. That's the reason why I can believe some of what he's saying. Okay, now as far as you know why he does, I'm not getting into all that because there's a, n- a number of reasons why people say, oh, he's just doing that for this, oh, he's just doing that for. And at the end of the day, at this point, hip hop gaming don't need you know to do anything to try to get fame. I mean, the man is sponsored by Hot 97. For those of you that have, have no idea what that is, that's Hot 97 is like well, at one time was the biggest radio station in New York City. It's, right now, it's probably competing with Power 105. You know, I think 105 has has, def, has maybe have surpassed them with the Breakfast Club and all that. But anyway, that that's not like a little thing. That's a big deal. You know, he doesn't need to try to make himself famous, just having that tag on it, he's going to be put in places that a lot of people can't get to. So, anyway, definitely, guys, if you want to call in, give us your thoughts, but, you know, I, you should take from what he said, man, it, it, that's quite a few people now who are feeling like it's not going to be NFL. Like Azula said, why aren't they showing that? Every screenshot that we're seeing is generic. Why wait and unveil that at E3? To me, Damon, if you're listening, you know I respect you, and I know it ain't you, but to me, that don't make sense. <laughs> like, I don't care what you announce at E3, you are not going to take down the Giant in that little bit of time. You need to be pulling out all the stops right now. But anyway, let's get to the callers, man. We have two callers on the queue now. Like I said, first 757, we'll bring him in. Then there's 205. After that, we have 615. All right, so 757, man. Let's go ahead and get you in for your segment real quick. How you doing, man? How was your week? Yeah, it was a good week, man. What's going on, fellas? Yeah, what's going on? Nothing yeah, much. What's going on? Nothing much. You, you know, the, the crazy thing with all this. Yo, 757, you there? Hello? Went out, went out on it. We go. We'll bring you back in. Uh, press one when you're back on the line. What we'll do in the meantime is, is grab the calls because uh, we have three in the queue now. But definitely, you know, if you come back, we, we'll slide you back in. But press one so I know that you're ready and, and able to speak. Two zero five. We got you in live, man. How you doing? Pretty good. How y'all guys? Pretty good. How y'all hey, what's happening? Good, man. Hey, what's happening, man? Um, just uh. To touch on a few things. Let's think uh, old hip-hop game. Old hip-hop game. It's kind of funny to me how everybody's getting hopped up about Joe no Montana. Montana. And we ain't seen anything about, about that game yet. <laughs> you know, I go back to uh, a few things that I heard from some uh, heard old from folks some back in the day. You know, the day. Uh, they used to tell you, Tell me, you know, it's better to sleep with a snake that you know than the one that you don't know. Because the enemy that you don't know, if you sleep around with, is going to end up getting you killed off. So uh, just keep that in mind. I hope you all have a great show and uh, enjoy listening. That's all I got to say tonight, guys. Have a great night. All right, man. Yeah, man, we appreciate that. Um, like always, we always appreciate your call. We appreciate your opinion, and hey, I really like that analogy too. <laughs> but for you guys who may not have caught that, basically go with what you know until you know otherwise. Let's go ahead and grab uh, six one five, and Azul will give you your reply. I believe this may be. Uh, Second leak, I think, if I remember correctly. Six one five, we got you on live, man. How you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing good. It hey, is SEC. It is SEC. Hey, hey I don't know why. On, I man. Second, man. It's SEC. My bad. 
That's all right. Yeah. That's, that's all right. right. How are you guys that's doing tonight? Right. How are you guys doing tonight? Good, man. How you doing? Good. Good, good. Good, good show good. as always. Good show as always. Uh, I just wanted to uh I wanted to you, call uh, in this is kind of uh, off kind topic. Of, uh, I'll get to the uh Joe the uh Joe Montana Joe game Montana. in a second. But I have to say that boy, I have really developed a lot of respect for Clint Oldenburg as of late. You know, he takes a he takes a a lot of flack over Twitter and he just seems to have a response for everyone that asks him a question. Um, I have to say, for the first time in a long time, I have a lot of respect um, for Clint Oldenburg, and I, you know, I believe that this guy, I believe that he's going to get it done. You know, I'm really excited about uh, Madden 16. I think it's going to be a great, great year for it. Um, just counting the days for that. Um, but, you know, I, I just had to, you know, I had to make that the beginning of my call, you know, is to just uh, send a shout-out to Clint. And, uh, you know, I swear there's probably not one question that I've asked him that he hasn't answered. You know, so he's doing a great job with transparency on that front. And, uh, uh, you know, that's something we've never had from EA. So uh, looking forward to uh, to Madden 16 this year. Um, get going over to the uh, Joe Montana front. I don't know what to think at this point. <laughs> I mean, my my head is spinning. You know, I watch the YouTube videos. Um, you know, trying to connect the dots here. Um, and listen to hip hop uh, gamers uh, video the other night, and uh, and I walked away. You know, not really knowing what to think. Um. He had mentioned in that video that the purpose of Joe Montana is the purpose of this new game is to is to present an option, right? Is that is that what you guys understood from the video? It's to present an option. Uh-huh. It's not necessarily to be a money maker. I mean, obviously, it has to make money because that's business. But the purpose of the, the creation of this game was to was to pre- present an option other than than uh, Madden, right? That that was Joe's objective. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you know he had also gone on in that video to mention that that it it, it sounded like based on what he was saying that Microsoft was not completely on board yet. It almost sounded like the way that he presented it was that Microsoft was just kind of sitting back to see how the game did. Is that the way you guys understood it? Yeah, he he, did, he said something to that effect. Yeah, and then and then the thing that that kind of spun my head a little bit is the recent tweet that Joe Montana made in regards to being on the Microsoft campus. Mhm. So it sounds like there's a lot that's going on there. Like there's it's it's almost like um, you know, if if what hip hop gamers saying is true and then Joe Montana's up there at Microsoft, there are some negotiations going on there. I mean, that that would be speculation cuz cuz we we don't know why Joe Montana was there. But I mean, one would would assume that Joe Montana, you know, given all the information we've had, that Joe Montana would be on the campus, possibly involved in some sort of negotiation there. Anyway, guys, I was just gonna, I was just gonna have you, uh, uh, you know, just, uh, um, you know, give your quick thoughts on that. Um, from what I know, granted, I don't know Joe Montana personally, but you know, I expect just from what I know that the game is going to be good. I don't think that Joe Montana would release a game that is not up to standard because of what I know um, in regards to, you know, how he played the game and and from what I know from, you know, reading up on him personally. I just, he's a winner. I have no doubt 
that if Joe Montana releases a product, it's going to be a great product. Anyway, guys, I'll go ahead and leave you with that. I uh, appreciate, uh, you know, I appreciate everything that that you guys do. I appreciate this show, and I love listening to you every every week. And uh, I'll chime in again sometime. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate the appreciate call. you calling in. Yeah, definitely. Six one five and, and, and SEC person, but here's the thing: I hope it's great too. I hope for the sake of John Madden football that it excels in areas that Madden does not. I put this on Twitter um, earlier this week, and it's funny because some people couldn't even respond to it, but <clears throat> I basically asked. What are the areas that you're expecting for Joe Montana football, if it's a game, for Joe Montana football to exceed or succeed in that maybe Matt hasn't? And I got some good answers. <clears throat> and I also asked, you know, what what are people expecting from Madden 16? So the fact that we can even have that conversation is a good thing. Uh, and until Joe Montana puts something in concrete, then, I mean, we, it's all speculation until we can actually get a confirmation of the game. But I'm hopeful, too. And I'm unbiased as well in the fact that I want to see Joe Montana do well. I'm going to support it if it's on the console. I'll even own the Xbox One. And I'm not um, so much of a NFLer that I have to have the NFL license. I can play an unlicensed football game. I don't have an Xbox One, but if it's only on Xbox One and I see some gameplay, I like what I see out of it, the gameplay is fluid, and it looks like it's a competitor, I'm going to support the game. And that means I'm going to buy a system, Xbox One, just to play that game. And I don't think it gets any more unbiased than that, honestly. (laughs) Because you have, you know, individuals who won't play Madden at all. But yet they're not biased. So, you know, it is what it is. At the end of the day, we've shown in Wakia, shout out to in Wakia and 757, who always preach about the fundamentals in Madden and beating your opponent with football principle and showing that it can be done in Madden. And I hope the same thing can be said about Joe Montana football. I actually think that it's going to be great if it releases. And I have faith in Joe. Maybe I shouldn't. Joe's not. When's the last time you see Joe Montana pick up some sticks? I don't think he's a gamer, so if the game was bad, I don't think he would really be able to tell. That's why you have to let some gamers put some eyes on it as well. Because... Excuse me, because we say this all the time, even with Madden. You could think something is good in Madden as a developer, but until somebody from, you know, the community comes in and says, oh, look at this and this and this, because you need a fresh perspective, you need some more eyes on it, because you could be looking at it for um, six, seven months and not see something, bring in some fresh pair of eyes and say, oh, well, you know, I've been messing with this game every day and never saw that. So that's the kind of benefit you get from, you know, involving the community in your development. And hopefully Joe Montana football along the way will do that if they haven't done that at some point. Because I think that's important as well. So, you know, knowing Joe Montana, the perfectionist that he is, the understudy and student of Bill Walsh, who was also a perfectionist, um, I believe that he will, you know, drive the team to do great things. But at the same time, Joe Montana wasn't playing 2K5. He wasn't playing 2K8. I, well, this is just my opinion. I don't think he was. He might have been, but I don't think he was playing all pro football 2K8, Madden, and all this along this time. You need some individuals who can charter the history of, of games and say, you know what, this is good, but you need this. Uh, this is bad, but, you know, th- this is something the community is not going to like about this. Or you need to add this, this, and this. So we'll see. Um, hopefully, you know, with Madden, hopefully they go tat, tit for tat with Madden. Hopefully Madden puts out some information and then they put out something. And they do that all the way up until E3 and then they just clash 
at E3. And that's what I'm hoping for. And that's about as unbiased as it gets from a person who plays all football games, not just ones made by 2K. And I'll and people, and I just, I just want to say this real quick. People seem to have clearly forgotten the fact that we said on this show that if this game was mobile, we'd buy it. And that was several that was several months ago. We said if this game was mobile, we'd support it. I, I mean, I mainly remember Azura saying it. I know I've said it on Twitter, even on the show. If this game was mobile, this was before we seen any of these screenshots. We were still speculating, oh, we got the weather, AI, all this stuff. We were still like, I don't know. There still may be a mobile joint. But, hey, either way, you know what? I'm going to support it regardless. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to sit up here, you know, like, it, we're not biased. This, <laughs> I know people like to put us in that in that boat, but this is non-biased gaming, man. We just want we we want the selection. We're getting it, but I just wanted to make that point real quick, man. We we want these games to be great, but regardless, we're going to support because of the competition. You know what I'm saying? We just want to make sure we just want it to be adequate. But I'm supporting it out of the way. Pretty so, much. Just man. wanted to say that real quick. Yep. Pretty much. So we'll move on to the next caller uh, to allow the callers to know, as well as uh, reminding ourselves. Uh, we're down to 27 minutes or so. We got looks like three callers, three three seven two five three, which I believe is an old buddy of ours, and then seven five seven. So what we'll do is try to get through the two callers, then bring seven five seven in to close out the show. Um, so, like I said, for the callers as well as ourselves, just being mindful of time so we can get everybody in and, you know, get their questions in and we can reflect. So, 337, man, we got you in live. How you doing, man? Hey, how's it going, y'all? Um, no, what's up? Yeah, I just want to say, man, you guys got a beautiful thing going on. I think I think this radio show, and the way you, your chemistry among yourselves is like, it really it really – Makes a makes your point stick, you know what I mean? It's like people can hear where you're coming from, and and, and we can kind of vibe on what you guys probably know already. I mean, this is definitely in regards to like Madden. I don't know how much you know about uh, Joe Montana football, but it's like I I, I could I could see that you guys are saying certain things that lets me know that. You know, it's like Madden's about to try to do something, but I don't know how deep it is yet. But uh, I'm I, I'm one of those people that's uh, I hope Madden improves and comes and comes with a better game and, and, and do the full potential of making a football game and not just you know half half doing it, but you know really putting the the competition to to be competition because you know people are still saying that NFL 2K5 is better than Madden 15. And I, I tried to play uh, NFL 2K5 uh, not too long ago with the updated rosters, and uh, I couldn't even get through the first through the first quarter, you know, because I play 15 minute quarter, so I, it's like I can't even get through the first quarter without turning it off. And uh, Madden, I, I like Madden 15, uh, 15, but as far as hip hop gamers saying that uh, Joe Montana is not going to be an NFL license, you know, I, it looks that way to me because they're not because. Sh- Joe Montana and them aren't showing any uh, professional teams in their screenshots, and they're definitely not saying anything. That leads me uh-huh. to believe that Hip Hop Gamer may be right. And, you know, I, like I said I, in my video, I don't know how credible uh, Hip Hop Gamer is. I know he's a journalist, and I know uh, he, 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 he can get into the, uh, some information that nobody else can get, you know, as far as being a journalist and everything. But uh, I, I'm not discrediting him or nothing, but. Uh, I'm still going to be hopeful that uh, Joe Montana is just showing that it's, the game is probably just customizable, that you can probably make your own team, make your own players, and, and probably showcasing that because the word got out that uh, full customization was something that was required by the community. So I'm just going to see what you guys say, uh, say about that. And uh, thanks for having me on the show. Y'all keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate y'all going out to EA and uh, telling them guys what's up. All right, I'll check you guys later. Good evening. Yeah, man. Well, like always, we appreciate the call and, you know, just to try to keep it relatively short so we can move on and get everybody in. 
Hey, that I agree with all of what you said. <laughs> I've said many times as well. Those games, 2K and all of those, have done things better than Madden. But, you know, be honest with yourself. Try to go back and play them. And it, it might not even just be gameplay. It's, just, it's hard because it's old technology. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying one is better. You know, we all have said 2K did it better. But that's just the reality of it. And like you said, we don't really know everything as far as, you know, hip-hop gaming. But I, I definitely feel, I feel a little lean more towards him being a little more credible. One, like Smitty said, us being at E3 and seeing how things go down. And two, you know, I personally, after meeting him and all that, I don't see what gain he gets from hyping stuff up for no reason. I just think that's just his journalist approach. He's always done that. <laughs> so I can't, you know, I can't knock him for that. But I don't know, man. Those dots are starting to connect in my eyes. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. So, all right, guys, we're going to bring in 253, and this is a, a old buddy of ours. We're going to go ahead and get him in, and then after that, we'll wrap up with 757. So, Mr. Rate Rate King, man, how you doing tonight, man? Go ahead and, and, and bless us with something. Well, you know, I'm not great. I'm actually rating right now as we speak. You know, I can't do nothing else in the basement. But, um, <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I'm going to say this about all games. You know, I hope they make Madden improvements on 16. I know they will eventually. I hope Montana is something that doesn't die off by next year. All I want is good games and the choice to play whatever I want, like we had back in the day. Too many people are talking way above what they know. If you don't know the business of these people, don't say much because you'll be surprised what they really have to go through to get things done. I don't care if Montana is at Microsoft. He might have been there to go there to look at Windows 10. We don't know what he was doing there. So why make up a story? If we know the facts, stick with them. If we don't, don't mention it because too much speculation is going to be in a lot of disappointment. And all I know about either games is I just want customization to be good. That's all I care about. I don't need an NFL game. But mm -hmm. the point <clears throat> the point that I'm making was hyped up so much in the community because we're like dogs without, you know, food. You throw a piece of meat at 10 dogs, we're going to rip it apart. There's not enough for every one of them. That's what's going on now. Mm. Everybody's making speculation, speculation, and they ain't got no nothing to back it up. Nothing. What, what are you going to back up? What's this? Um, what was that? They have all new features that have never been done in a football game. Well, you better make things that make my butthole pucker up real quick because if I don't see it, I'm going to let you know about it. <laughs> because, first of all, there's been over, what, hundreds of football games made? What are you going to bring that we haven't seen before? i like to know that list. I want to know it because I don't think there's much they could bring that's so different. I saw the screenshot just recently, and it looked good. You know, everything looks good when it's still, but when it starts playing, that's a whole new ball game. So I know if it plays the way it should, I will make a roster beyond recognition, but only very few will get it. Just let everybody know that. But um, it's going to be... It's going to be when I see the videos. And even then, I won't care. It's when I go to GameStop and get the game myself and pop it in, then I'll make my guess. Till then, I don't really care what they got going on right now. Yeah. Last talk. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm trying to say, dude, is, you know, let's just see what they got before we start talking. I mean, not, not you guys. I'm talking about the public. Too much speculation, man. This game could be another backbreaker, a little better, or 2K8, another little better. They might be dead within a year because they don't have the, the necessary thing to make a non-licensed football game survive in the market. Don't look at it like checkers. Look at it like check. You got to make some long-term moves in order to win. You can't just make quick little jumps and hope you get through. So I'll leave it at that, man. Oh man, well you know we appreciate your call, Smitty man. What you what you got on that? I mean, he's telling it. I mean, Neff already knows what's up, man. You know what I'm saying? It's dude. It, the reason why, and I, I just want to throw this out real quick, so I know we're gonna wrap it with seven five seven, but just real quick, fast. I just want to read these numbers real quick. The, this game has to have the NFL license for this reason. Backbreaker 
sold less than 300,000 units, no NFL license. APS sold 400,000 units between two consoles, no NFL license. PES 15, okay, PES 15 sold 1.21 million copies between PS between Gen 3, Gen 4, and uh, play and PC, okay. FIFA 15. Now this is a game with the licensing. Sold 14.6 million copies right now. Wow. With Gen 3, <laughs> Gen 4, and PC gaming. You can tell me all you want that this game don't need a license. It needs the NFL license. Soccer is widely accepted way over football. Believe me, it needs the NFL license. That's why we're saying yes. That, and we've said it. This community will support it. But it needs the NFL license to further enhance it. That's all we're saying. It's only going to help. It's well, not a hindrance. That, uh, Smitty, we're saying that just to kind of – Further your point, we're saying that not because we want the license to be in the game for ourselves, but for the game to succeed. Yeah. So, I mean, I just wanted to put that point in there. We're not saying, oh, we have it has to have the NFL for us to play it. No. Yeah. But for it to be a successful title and for it to have year two, year three, and six, and seven, and eight, and have eight year plans and three year plans like people hate for Madden, it has to have the monetary support. And in order to have that, you need something bigger behind it. It's not about yeah. being the logo standard virtual, as I saw you put out there on Twitter. We're saying that for people to get behind it, not us, not the sim community, because the sim community will play without it. Right. For, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry to pick up a game and sit next to Madden, they need to see the logo. And that's for the yeah. game to be successful. I just had to interject that point. No, no, no. You good. And I just want to say this last thing. And PES 15 arguably is the better playing game from a gameplay standpoint. And guess what? That's the game that is barely selling 2 million copies, and they slashed the price of that game in half. So think about that. That's what we're just pointing. This is why we make these points. We research these things and then speak on it. We're just not saying it just because it's popular. We're saying it because this is valid. Like, there's valid, legitimate reasoning behind this stuff. That's why we're saying it needs life. So hopefully it does. If it doesn't, we're going to rock out on it regardless. I'm buying it twice. So I'm still supporting it out of the way. But just wanted to make that point. We got to bring in <laughs> 757. So I'm going to throw it back to you, sir, man. You got it. Yeah, and, and I'm going to make this point real quick, and I want it to be very clear. It's a whole lot of foolishness right now I see going on amongst Twitter and all that. But guess what? I'm not saying nothing about it. And and I, I want everybody to know that. As you've been able to see on Twitter, I've stopped replying. But listen, going forward, and I'm, I'm even saying this to my co-host, all of that is not even going to be brought up on the show. Forget it. Let's move forward. We're doing a good thing here. <laughs> We're unbiased and all of that. Not going to waste my time with that. I would recommend anybody who has a question, call the show. You want to have a dialogue, call the show. But don't expect Sim or anybody else to, well, I can't speak for, for everybody else, you know, just because we, we're all individuals. But all of that Twitter and Facebook, I'm done. As you all can tell, but some people, the reason why I even said anything, because somebody sent me a message, that, hey, man, why you ain't saying nothing? I told you I ain't saying nothing. I'm moving forward, period. <laughs> but it's, My bad, man. I, I just had to. Sometimes I, I'm i I'm a little, I like, because it's like, oh, you know, no, you I'm had good. a good time, you enjoy yourself, you, you had a barbecue, and then it's just a whole bunch of gnats just come flying. I'm just not going to sit there and let them just... Get in my eye and my mouth. I just swat out or, or spray some raid at him. And sometimes I just have to do that. So I'll try not to do it on the show. But <laughs> when I see stuff I like that, man, I, that's just ridiculous to me. But, yeah, I, my I, bad. I, I, I won't do that on the show. No, no. You ain't no apology needed. I'm absolutely feel you. The only reason why I'm saying this is because the larger crowd 
who follows us has asked for us to stop doing that. So we're going to oblige you guys. That's all I'm saying. But if you think it's us, <laughs> I'm on Twitter right now. You see a lot of foolishness. Done with all that. It, it is funny because it's foolishness coming from people who said they won't do it no more. <laughs> but that's it, guys. Fans, subs, whoever. No, family. We, I'm going to say family. I don't treat y'all like subs. And, nah. We're a, we're a community, a family. I had to say that. We, we hear you. We ain't going to do it no more. And if we do, hold us accountable to it. Just like we would hold you accountable yep. to it. But anyway, yep. let's get 757 back in here, man. I think he's going to take us home. Welcome back, 757, man. Go ahead and give us Yo, something, can man. Yeah, Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear Okay. I had, yeah, I had a little technical difficulty. All right, fellas. You know, I got in the sim community because I'm a gamer. I've always been a gamer. And when the social media aspect was able to hit, you know, I was able to be able to see some brothers like myself who was feeling about the video game situation as I was. Because a lot of times we feel like, damn, am I the only one seeing all of this? And when I realized that I wasn't, I started to follow all of you guys that were in the same community. Uh, all three of y'all, um, uh, crazy-ass post ruckus, um, hip-hop gamer, everybody. So it was interesting to see, you know, a lot of times y'all start your subject and y'all begin to talk that we'd be on the same wavelength. It'd be crazy. Because I also looked at that video from Hip Hop Gamer. And I want to say to Madden that this is y'all guys' first full development cycle. The full development cycle. I expect for you guys to show us something and do more and have a turn-the-corner moment at this point. I understand, and I think the sim community also understands, that everything in this game is not going to be perfect. We understand that you guys got a checklist and a checkboard and that y'all want to reach as many of those things on that checklist as you possibly can. But I also want y'all guys to understand that it's somebody coming. In that first video, Hip Hop Gamer, Show Rex calling those boys out. He played it in his video. Now, you you piss some folks off with that video. Now, whether those guys are teaming up or whatever is going on, it's a part of that process in Joe Montana. What people got to understand about business is Joe has a very strategic plan, and he's partnered up with these people, and he's told them one thing, proof of concept. That's what businesses do when they're starting up. If we sell X amount of units, they're going to go back to the NFL with the backing of Microsoft, with the 1.5 million numbers or whatever that number that they've decided to do, and go back to the NFL and potentially get that license open. Joe Montana is one of the NFL's golden boys. Don't get that twisted. He's one of their golden boys. He's going to go to them with a definitive plan, with the numbers, with the back, backing of specific groups, and potentially get that license open. Now, if he can do one point whatever without the license, he knows he needs it as well. But he also knows that he has to get the proof of concept, that we can put together a game that can sell and rival Madden. They're not going to do as many numbers, but they're going to do a substantial amount of money and get positive feedback from the community, more good than bad. Now, Madden also has something going against them that a lot of the community members are pissed off with them from something that happened a long time ago, and they still haven't forgiven them. So you guys got to bring it because you're the champ. Whether you got the belt by earning it or whether you got it by default, you have it. Now, Pacquiao's coming. What are you guys going to do? You guys got to give us a turnkey game. We got to do nothing. That's something 10% better. We need 10 times better, to be honest. We understand how hard it is. We understand you are working your butts off, but we also understand that you guys have to do more. You guys have to put some things in there. You have to convince them suits. You have to let them know that somebody's coming and give us what we want. Give us the game 
that we can say, this is transition. This is next gen. This is football. Because if y'all guys don't do it, and then Joe Montana does do it, you're going to have a big problem. You're going to have a big problem. Because people are willing to buy a console for a football game. What? That's a big deal. That's a big deal. We want to see it. We want to see that turnkey. We want to see – we keep saying why I receive a DB interaction, but what we're really saying is interaction between offense and defense as it's supposed to be played out in the actual game. That somebody can't trick the system and spread a wide out way outside of the tackle and he doesn't recognize that that's his man. That the team doesn't slide like they're supposed to. The linebackers are still running behind, running up defensive back. I mean, defensive linemen back. The running backs don't understand that somebody's in front of them and pushing him into the next defender or throwing a juke move and moving outside into the open hole. That we're not able to place the ball like Rosenberger did in that Super Bowl, over the safety, in front of the corner, back of the end zone, spectacular catch, touchdown. We need that. We want it, and we'll figure it out. We'll figure out the system. We'll figure out the buttons. We'll lab it. Just give us the product. These guys are going down to E3, and I love the fact that you guys are bringing back the information, and I know you guys know a little something. And I know you probably feel like EA ain't going out without a fight, and I hope they don't because they have another hungry hungry guy that's coming to take their spot. They're not hiding it. They're not making a secret about it. They're tweeting it. It is what it is. And now we're going to have this clash. And I just hope that Joe does his part and it forces Matt to do what they need to do to give us what we want. And if we get that, we get a win-win. A lot of people that are younger have not played game day and Madden and, and Sony. They haven't played all these different aspects. A lot of these young, this young community, all they know is Madden. We've came through the whole process of this whole situation with gaming from the very beginning. I tell everybody to go on the Netflix, and Netflix has a movie out about video game creating. And go look at that movie, and you guys will see not only the evolution of how this whole video game process has came, but you'll also see how hard it is to create. But Madden, EA, you've made billions of dollars off of us. So we expect for you to invest that money back into the game and give us what we want and what we deserve. Because whether we liked you or didn't like you or a little pissed off, we still supported you. So give us what we need and give us the game that we want. And it would be a shame for this newbie and this rookie to come out here on your field and take your spot. Fellas, I appreciate your time. I thank you for allowing me to talk. To talk, uh, man, I love y'all guys, man. Keep pushing the community. Keep pushing the dev. Fuck the people that are talking. You from the crib, DA? We don't do all that rapping, man. After somebody stop listening to to what the vision is, we shut the fuck up, man. I appreciate y'all, man, and thank you for your time. Mike, always, man. You you already know, man. <laughs> what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give these these guys a hint, man. Y- y'all need to really just listen to what Seven Five Seven be saying. How is it that he's able to see things the way he does, and you guys can't? There, there, there it is again. And I'm saying you guys. I'm talking about anybody who's missing the picture. There it is again. He's recognizing, and he even threw it through a different angle. It's a concept. Proof of concept. Remember, 757 is a businessman, in case you, you know, y'all know, you haven't caught that, you know, over the last few shows or since he's been calling. That makes a lot of sense to me what he just said. That also kind of ties into what um, SEC Elite was saying that he took from Hip Hop Gamers video. See, now we're talking about about five and six different areas who are pulling some of these same, you know, a, a kind of, you know, comprehending it the same way. All I'm saying is, guys, we are all grown. We're not dumb. We are not, uh, I would hope not. I would hope none of you guys out there are are just plain dumb. I'm just keeping it real. 
if you open your eyes and look at things and look at business, the dots are connected with Joe Montana as far as, of course, I keep asking them to confirm because uh, who knows? They might throw a curveball. Should, you know, it would be great if they did that. But a lot of stuff to me is just pointing towards non-license, Xbox, PC. You know, a lot of these things are making sense to me. But one thing I definitely wanted to point out that hip hop, um, not hip hop gamer, but uh, 757 just said, man, he is absolutely right about the things that Joe Montana would need to have. Like what he said, like now, now he, we on the same wavelength now about AI. Cause this is stuff I preach all the time in videos to the Madden devs. To me, I thought player sense was going to be with my man 757 just said. I got a tackle sitting here, and he like, whoa, why is he lined up over there? And he he gets up, and he's like, yo, switch, switch. Remember remember all those adjustments and stuff we saw RG3 doing in that in that uh, trailer, what, two years ago? Mm-hmm. This is what I'm talking about. I thought that kind of stuff was going to be player sense. I haven't seen that yet. You know, you recognize it. Like, I, I just mentioned this to Clint the other day. I was like, man. I would love the game to get to a point to where, like, my tackle, he just gets beat, and now he's jumping. You know, he might get false starts because Marcus Ware is killing him. Or even worse, he thinking the double team is coming. So now he tries, you know, not a double team. He's thinking, um, like, two guys are coming in the same gap. So now he reacts to that, but in reality, it's not a blitz. Or he picks up the wrong guy and lets somebody else through. That's the kind of organic gameplay I want. And it, it starts with AI. You know, of course, we want to get the on-the-field stuff right, like the movement and physics and all that. Of course. I'm not even going to talk about that because if Joe Montana ain't got that, come on. But I want to see some next-gen stuff. Yeah, AI will carry you a long way. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Go ahead, Smitty. This, got two this, no, I just want to say real quick, this is this the thing. We we haven't seen number one the full disc space hasn't been used yet in regards to Madden. It hasn't even hit twenty gig. It's a fifty gig. It's a fifty gig disc, uh, gig disc, and they're still building. So you don't know. You never know what it is that they're able to potentially fulfill. And once again, if you pay attention to the interviews that these guys do, especially when it comes to E3, you're hearing it all being said right there. You're hearing it. These guys are being very open, very upfront right there, but people ignore it and just focus on he took a shot at 2K. Let's pay attention to that. Listen to everything that's said, not just what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Hear everything. Listen to everything. It's all right there. And the thing is, we just advise you, and I'm mean, once again, since we get dubbed as leaders and everything, well, as a leader, if this game is not suiting you, as I said last month, leave <laughs> it on the freaking show. Do not leave touch it the game. On the show. <laughs> yes. Don't be. Don't need to be tweeting all day about this stuff. Just leave the game alone. Don't even talk about it. Just we exactly. now, now we got an option. Montana coming. Now, we don't need to talk about it no more. Just play what you want and just have fun. Good. Just leave it alone. Yeah. I'm a co-sign that as a leader, we'll be playing I'm both. telling you to do what you got to do. Stop worrying about something that you don't like. Period. Yeah. And as a community, again, we have to be stronger people. We're going to go home on that one. Ten seconds left. Just remember that for next week. We have to be a stronger professional community or you're not going to be heard. You, not us. You. That's it. Have a great night. We'll be back next week. Peace. Peace. Once again, guys, thank you for tuning in. And if you want to interact with me live, come on by Sim Standard Radio every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, along with Smitty, and Azure Fat. If you want to give us a call, you can reach us at 914-338-0794. Of course, for more content, go ahead and click the link above. 
All right? Until next time, lights out.